Earth, oceans, atmosphere. These interconnected systems exist in a delicate balance that has kept conditions on our planet relatively stable for the past 12,000 years. This stability helped humanity flourish. But as our population and civilizations have grown, we've pulled more and more resources away from these life support systems, diverting water, land and minerals to agriculture, industry and urban development. People began to wonder, would these pressures eventually prove too much? In 2007, Johan Rockström and Will Steffen set out to answer a fundamental question. What is the safe operating space for humanity on planet Earth. In other words, what are the limits of key Earth system processes that we cannot exceed if we want to avoid rapid and catastrophic environmental change? Working with an international team of scientists, they define nine processes that keep Earth's life support system stable. They also estimated the limits of how far we could change and exploit these processes before the system would pass a threshold of no return. They suggested limits, called planetary boundaries, guardrails to keep us a safe distance from these catastrophic tipping points. In the 1980s, scientists found that chemicals called CFCs were degrading the ozone layer, a thin atmospheric layer that absorbs some of the dangerous wavelengths of ultraviolet radiation from the sun and acts like a protective layer of sunscreen for the planet. But ozone-damaging CFCs were being used then all over the world in refrigerators, aerosol cans and other products. Alarming satellite data revealed a dangerous thinning of ozone over the Antarctic. In response to this existential threat, the world's nations met in 1987 and signed the Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer they started phasing out CFC use. Today, the ozone layer is in recovery, and it's hoped the damage to this vital life support system will be repaired by 2050. Humanity, for the first time, had stepped back from overshooting a planetary boundary. In addition to the ozone layer, Rockstrom and Stefan identified eight other planetary boundaries. Biogeochemical flows of nitrogen and phosphorus, climate change, ocean acidification, freshwater consumption, biodiversity, land system change, atmospheric aerosol pollution, and chemical pollution. Because these processes are interlinked, passing a threshold in one area can lead to a cascade of changes, destabilizing other systems, causing them to topple like dominoes beyond our control. For example, climate change, a planetary boundary, is triggered by increasing atmospheric carbon emissions. But that excess carbon also causes ocean acidification, a second planetary boundary which in turn impacts marine species like corals and fish, destabilizing biodiversity, yet another planetary boundary. Likewise, deforestation by agribusiness in huge tropical forests, as seen in the Amazon, reduces the amount of water evaporating from leaves, which reduces rainfall, causing forests to transition into dry savannas and possibly altering weather systems across entire continents. In this case, land use change helps generate climate change, which diminishes biodiversity, which brings more climate change. Diverse ecosystems are essential to provide us with food, clean, water, materials, medicine, even flood defences. And it's these ecosystem services that are vital to the human future. Estimates suggest we're already living outside the safe zone for at least four of the nine planetary boundaries, putting Earth on course for disruptive changes in our life support system not experienced for tens of thousands of years. The concept of planetary boundaries was developed as a guide to help us keep Earth conditions within a safe range. Now, Overshoot underlines the urgency of the sustainability crisis confronting us. But the first planetary boundary we crossed offers us a hopeful path ahead. If nations can come together, as they did to meet the CFC threat to the ozone layer, then we can address climate change, biodiversity loss, pollution and more. Then there's a chance we can reverse current trends and steer Earth's key life support systems back to the safe, habitable zone again.